Well, hello everybody and welcome to the class once again. Last time in our uh, class we were uh, doing kanji, we were learning about kanji, how it has come into being, how it came into Japan and how it is used. What are the different ways you can understand kanji, you can look up a kanji dictionary and lot of other things, what are the readings, what is the stroke order of kanji. So, well we will continue with this in this lesson also, because we were unable to complete what we were doing last time. A big chunk is still left, so we will try to do that. I hope by, by going through this, by learning this and doing this class, your uh, kanji concepts are a little clear. Though this class is not about kanji, this is not about learning kanji and writing kanji, it is just to explain to you what kanji is and how to look up a kanji dictionary. So, well last time in our class, we did what is stroke order what is onyomi, what is kunyomi as you can see over here, onyomi and kunyomi. A quick recap, onyomi and kunyomi. Well, onyomi is what the reading is from China, the Chinese reading and kunyomi is reading of the country that is the Japanese reading. Most of the time for characters as I told you last time as well, the kunyomi is used for single kanji characters. And when you write two or three kanji characters, you join characters then onyomi is used. There are a few characters here you can see, there is hito over here and hito if read like this as a single character is hito and if it is read with another character for example, then it is read as jin as nihon jin which you have already done. You know the word and now you can see how it is written. Then there is another character which is given over here, which is, tell me what is this character? Can you tell me? We have done this a number of times, we have practiced it also. What is it? Well, this is o ki, o ki e. Please remember there is a double o and there is a double i. Now, this double i over here when you write in Roman, it looks like a double i, but it is actually ki over here and e like this. This ki is a syllable as you already know. Now, we also did stroke order last time. Kanjis can be categorized in groups by stroke order. For example, you have kanjis like ni, you have kanjis like ju, you have kanji characters like shichi, also q. So, these are all two stroke characters and you can group them very nicely. Also, you have done three stroke characters like do, do yobi no do, you have done kuchi, you have done ue. So, these are three stroke characters and again you can put them together in a group. You can see there are other characters as well over here there is suki and if you count 2, 3 and 4. So, it is a 4 stroke character 
you have another character 1, 2, 3 and 4. You all know this is Nichi, this is again a 4 stroke character. Then you have this character which is Mizu which is a 4 stroke character. Please remember this is 1 and this is a single stroke 2, 3 and 4. So, it is a 4 stroke character. You can again group it in a single set. So, well kanjis can also be grouped by stroke order and as I told you there are about 23 strokes sometimes in a character. So, you can you can actually go up from 1 till 23. So, you can have these groups and you can look up the dictionary and see by stroke order. Then you can also see by readings I had told you if you remember. For example, there are these two characters given over here he and he, he like this and he. This means fire and this means day, but the reading is the same. So, you can group it in one and there are so many others like this. These are the ones you have done. So, I am trying to cover all the simple kanjis that you have done. Then there is another one similar sounding character, similar reading Q which you did just now 1 and 2 and then you have Kuchi which is also Ku and also you have Sei over here and Sei. This means to be born or give birth to and this means gender. So, well these can again be grouped in a section. So, kanjis can be done by stroke order, kanjis can be done by readings and also the most important is that kanjis can be done by radicals. Now, this is something new for you. What are radicals? What is this word radical? We have been doing these characters nichi. We have done he, we have done ki, we have also done this small character. We have done in one of our kanjis, we have done this character. So, when you look at these characters, what does it mean? What does it show? This, these are called, all these are called radicals. Now, what does radical do? What is a radical? Well, a radical gives basic meaning to the character. For example, when you, when you look at this character, this is, this tells you that the kanji will have something to do with day, could be date, could be light, could be brightness. So, anything dealing with sun or with light will generally have this character in it. So, a kanji is formed with the help of radicals. Now, for example, if you have, if you look at this character, this is fire. This means fire, we all know that. Now, if there is something we want to say related to fire or heat or burning or roasting, frying, then this character will generally be there in the kanji, in the pictogram. So, this is how radicals are and they tell you more about the kanji. As is given over here, you can see why are they important. Well, a radical is that part of a kanji character that tells about the origin of the character, where the character is coming from, what is the basic meaning of the character. So, when you look at a character and you see the kanji, you see the radical in it, you automatically know that okay, this is what the basic meaning is, this is the origin of this kanji character or pictogram. Then 
it also helps in understanding and locating the character in a dictionary. Now, you want to see a certain character A, how do you go about looking in a dictionary? So, either it is by stroke order, by the reading of the character or by the radical. So, these radicals are extremely, extremely important for kanjis. Either a radical is a kanji itself. For example, you can see over here, these are all single kanjis also, these three over here. This is ki as you know, this is fire we just did and this is nichi which is sun. So, this is a kanji itself and also a kanji will have a pictogram, will have this, any of these characters depending on what you want to say. There are about 214 radicals and they are divided into 7 groups. Well, they have meanings, the division is there, you do not have to learn all of it. It is not that important because we are not doing kanji as such, we are just, this is just information, this is just for you to understand what kanji, what radicals are and how they are used in the language. So, now, these radicals can be placed anywhere in the kanji character. Now, you would say what, what is this? How can you place the character anywhere you want? Well, that is the division. There are seven places you can put these kanji characters. For example, if you have this square where you have to write a kanji, the kanji character can be on the left side of the character and the character could be here. This would be the radical and this would be the kanji. So, the whole kanji would look like this something over here. One. Now, you would say where is it that we have done this, uh, this kind of a character? Well, you have done this. If you remember, we have done this. If you remember, we have done we have done this character, if you remember. So, this is the radical over here, this is the radical over here and this is how the whole character is made. Now, we could also have the radical somewhere else. Now, where could that be? Well, it could also be on this side of the kanji character. Now, which one would that be? You have done the word, but you have not done the character. Well, it is ningyo, ningyo. So, this is the radical. So, it could also be on the right side as well. Now, it could also be on top of the character. Now, which character is that one? Can you tell me? You have done this character and you know the word. Let us, let me see if you can figure it out. Well, the character is densha. See over here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 13 like this, 13. So, well, this is another on top, another radical on top. So, you can have the radical over here as well. Now, you can also have the radical here. I think we have done the verb. Let me see if you remember it. Do you? Well, I will tell you, it is omo. Do you remember doing this? This is a field, tanaka san no ta and then and 4. This is over here like this and incidentally, this though we have not done, you know the word, this is kokoro meaning 
heart kokoro okay this is a simple one so you can just remember it like that then also we said 7 over here 7 so we have done how many 1 2 3 and 4 we still need to do three more let us see what are those well you could also have the character inside a box something over here and what is the character that you have done well this is kuni look at this one and this kuni meaning kuni so you could also have it like this you could also have it like this over here there are lot of such divisions if you remember doing the word niku well like this and like this so you need to make this first 1 2 and 3 niku niku means meet you could also have the radical here in a kanji character now what would that be well 1 2 3 <laughs> and hiroi that is spacious you can also have the character in this place now what is the word that we have done with this we have done tomo dachi tomo and 1 2 3 Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Tomo and da chi. This is the character that we were talking about in the beginning. This is how it will come. Now, what is the meaning of this character? This means passing through, going through. All the characters that we have done here. have been covered in class and there are more which you can see for top which is hana for pun again over here which is minutes and for sen sensei no sen or saki or ahead you can see these characters so well this is just to give you a small idea as to what radicals are i'm sure by now you are a little comfortable with radicals and what it means how it is written there are different names of course for these radicals and as you can see there are about 214 radicals divided into seven sections seven groups and i just now told you where all the radical can be in a kanji why these are important that also you know simple kanjis can be shown very nicely it can be understood but when you start to show an idea when it becomes abstract then joining kanjis is very important you have to join a number of characters and make one character out of it and that is when the radical is very very helpful that where exactly it is coming from and what is the meaning of the character now you would say why it is important to learn kanji what is the big thing about kanji and why can't we sort of remove kanji completely and do just hiragana why kanji when it is so difficult and when uh, some people may not find it very interesting well if you understand kanji then if you understand radicals you understand kanji you learn it properly you study it properly then it is not as difficult as it seems you can you can talk to people you can communicate with people easily if you know kanji is for example if you know that this is kuchi it looks like a mouth it is 
kuchi you understand what it is so the moment you see kuchi and if you know the meaning of this character which means to enter even if you do not know the word that entrance is something in Japanese, you see this written somewhere, you will automatically understand that this means entrance. And in a similar way, if you know the meaning of this character, which is demas, to go out, and of course, we know the meaning of this one, which is mouth or or entrance, then you know that this means it is exit. So, in such cases it is very very uh, interesting how kanjis can be useful and helpful. You can also talk to the Chinese people knowing a few kanjis you can inquire about exit and talk to them. For example, if you know this, this character hito which is person and you know this is one. So, if you see something written like this, for example, only one person is allowed and something like this is written, then you know only one person can go in or can do this work. Such places kanjis are helpful. Then also, now you know the meaning of this, you know the meaning of this. What does this mean? Can you tell me all of you? Just think about it for a few minutes and let me see. What do you have to say about this? This is person and this is mouth, kuchi. What could it be? Well, very simple people and mouth. So many mouths to feed, that is jinko which is population. So, this is how kanji is helpful, it is interesting and nice to learn as well. Another character which is given over there also is kawa, which is a river as you already know and again kuchi. So, when you see this written, of course, the reading is kawa guchi for a name but when you see this written, what comes to your mind? Well, you can easily say that this is mouth of a river, the source of the river, where it is coming from. So, this way kanjis are quite interesting. Now, we have done enough kanji, I think we have learnt a lot of things. This is our last lecture. And it has been a wonderful experience teaching all of you, communicating with all of you, doing a lot of things that I had promised I will do. And I hope that all of you have really enjoyed the classes, you have learnt a lot and you have gained more confidence. After doing these lectures, you can talk more freely with the Japanese not only in a given situation, not only by learning just these dialogues, but also by learning the language. You are able to talk, you are able to converse freely, you feel you can use expressions, you can use all that we have done in our classes and have enjoyed as much as I have. So well, before finishing, there is something very small here for you. There is a small uh, aisatsu no uta. Aisatsu is greetings, uta is songs. There is a small song over here and with the help of this song, we will do some expressions. You have covered some and we will do some over here. We will revise them once again. The uta is very sweet. You can just listen to it.
I hope you enjoyed it and you could catch a few phrases, a few expressions there. The first one that came up was, tell me what it was. Rokuji desu kara nan de shou? Well, ohayou gozaimasu desu ne? So shite, neru mai ni nan to imasu ka? Minna, oyasumi nasai to imasu. Oyasumi. Before going to bed. Oyasumi nasai. Only oyasumi is given, which is informal. It is oyasumi nasai. Then the third one was konnichiwa. Konnichiwa is to be used during the day, after 10 o'clock till probably 5 o'clock in the evening, konnichiwa or 6 o'clock in the evening depending on whether it is winter or summer. Konnichiwa means good day and you can see both of them say konnichiwa. Then in the evening as you can see there are stars over here, konbaun wa. Once it gets dark then it is konbaun wa and please see the way you bend, the way you bow when you say Konnichiwa to someone who is a little older to you or senior in rank and position. Not only for konbanwa, it is also for ohayou gozaimasu and konnichiwa. So you bend like this and then you do your aisatsu. Now this is very cultural and everywhere in Japan, anytime you leave house, well you will say itte kimas. I will go and come. And the person who is in the house, generally the wife, says itte irashai, please go quickly and come back. Of course, we, we do say a lot of things in English, but it is not a single phrase. So, well, this is a single phrase over here, itte irashai. And then when you return in the night, your wife is at home waiting for you or your mother is at home waiting for you, you would say, I am back, which is tadai ma, tadai ma and it is a little high tadai ma and then the person who is at home says, o kairi nasai, as we have already done in our class. Then before eating food, you would say itadakimasu, that is thank you God for all the food that you are giving me or have given me. All these phrases please are used all over Japan by everybody. So it is not that one person is using and the other person is using something else in a similar situation. No, all the time same phrases are used in this situation. So try to remember them and use them as much as you can. Itadaki mas. And then once you have eaten, 
you are through with your meals. Well, what do you say? Thank you God again for having given me this good food and the phrase is gochiso sama deshita. Gochiso sama deshita. Thank you very much for the good food. So, these are these are very important expressions and you must use them, you must revise them. They are interesting and they are easy to learn, easy to use in all situations. Then a simple expression like arigato, 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 arigato and then you also have domo arigato, domo arigato. Now this is a little polite, this is informal and then the most polite of them all is domo ari gato gozai mas. So well when you are with your friends you could just say domo also, you could say arigato, then if you are in a formal situation you have not met the person, well domo arigato and in a very very formal situation to people who are very senior to you, well domo arigato gozai mas. And because it is raining and he has a kasa already, thus dozo, dozo is please take. And actually dozo means permission given or permission granted. From the action that a person is performing, you can understand very clearly what the permission is about. Over here dozo means please take the umbrella and arigato is for thank you for giving me this umbrella. Then we have sayonara of course which all of you know and sayonara is a final goodbye. So people generally avoid using sayonara and they generally say mata ai masho, mata ai masho or mata ne which we have been doing in our lessons or mata ashta. See you again tomorrow, mata means again and ashta means tomorrow. So, see you again tomorrow. Then the uta says kino no yume no suzuki o mini iko, kino is yesterday, yume is dream. Let us continue our dream, let us go and see what is there for us in the dream. Then again there is more in the uta in the song and what is this? This is something new and we just did it very recently in one of our lessons hi sashiburi ne, hi sashiburi ne, hi sashi buri ne meaning seeing you after a very very long time shiba raku ne shiba raku ne so well please remember this is these both both these mean exactly the same sashiburi desu ne or shiba raku desu ne then we have one more over here which is ogenki desu ka, are you in good health? I am seeing you after a long time, we are meeting after a long time and this gentleman Rao san is asking Tanaka san, ogenki desu ka, are you in good health? So please remember about genki desu ka, something very interesting. You do not ask people whom you meet every day genki desu ka, are you in good health? Why? Because you know that they are doing well, they are fine and they are keeping all right. So when you meet someone after a long time, that is when you ask o genki desu ka. Please do not do this that asking people every day o genki desu ka, it is not considered very nice. Then 
How do you introduce yourself in Japanese? Well, this method of introduction is all over Japan. This is all that you say when you meet someone for the first time, not after a gap, that you meet someone after a month and again you start introducing yourself. No, you only introduce yourself in this particular manner, first time when you meet someone. And what is that? Hajimemashite. Hajimemashite and then yoroshiku. Hajimemashite, yoroshiku onegai shimasu. Hajime mashite, yoroshiku onegai shimasu. So, this is only done first time when you meet someone. Informally, you can say hajime mashite and just yoroshiku. You do not have to repeat the whole phrase hajime mashite yoroshiku onegai shimasu. And both parties have to say exactly this hajime mashite yoroshiku onegai shimasu over here and hajime mashite yoroshiku onegai shimasu. Watashi wa tanaka desu. Watashi wa rao desu. So, that is how you would introduce yourself. Then, what do you do when you go to a Japanese house? What do you do? As you can see over here in this picture, this is the main entrance of the house. There is a small bonsai plant over here. The lady of the house is here and this gentleman has just entered and there are slippers. And this is a small elevated portion where you have to step up and enter the house. So, what do you say and what do you do? Well, the first thing that you have to do is you will say ojama shimas when you are entering the house that I am intruding on your privacy and then you remove your sandals that is the first thing that you do over here. You remove your sandals over here, wear these sandals and then enter the house and there are slippers and this is a small elevated portion where you have to step up and enter the house. So, what do you say and what do you do? Well, the first thing that you have to do is you will say ojama shimas when you are entering the house that I am intruding on your privacy and then you remove your sandals that is the first thing that you do over here. You remove your sandals over here, wear these sandals and then enter the house. Why? Because they sit on the floor, they eat on the floor, they sleep on the floor and if you get dirty sandals or shoes inside, it dirties the floor and it is not clean. So, the best thing to do is to remove your shoes outside, wear separate sandals of the house and then walk in. So, what do you say over here? Ojama shimas, as I just told you, that is the first expression, that is the first phrase that you will say when you enter someone's house or about to enter someone's house. Ojama shimas. Jama means to be in the way to disturb someone. So, jama shimas and O is honorific. Ojama Shimas, I am intruding on your privacy. And then, what does the lady of the house say? You have done this expression, you have practiced it, says irashai. Dozo irashai. Dozo o angari kudasai is also used, meaning please come inside. O angari, step up and come inside is also used. Irashai is a normal expression for welcome. And in the uta you have yokoso and oitoma shimas. So, well the girl is coming and the two lines over there say nice to see you, welcome to our 
house and oitomashimas after having visited them after having stayed with them instead of saying ojamashimashita which is again I am sorry I have troubled you now I am about to leave ojama shimashita verb in past tense you say oitoma shimas meaning oitoma shimas means I am leaving now very very polite so this is the song which has a lot of expressions there are a lot of things lot of expressions that we were unable to do but well if you are able to manage this much that is pretty good and you will feel very very comfortable. This is the Aisatsu no Uta. You can see Ohayo Oyasumi Konnichiwa Konbanwa is given. Itte kimasu, itte irashai, tadaima, o kaeri nasai. Itadakimasu, gochiso sama, arigato, sayonara, kino no yume no suzuki yo mi ni iko. And then we have Gobusata Hisashiburi. O genki desu ka? I haven't met you for a long time. O genki desu ka? Hajime mashite yoroshiku ojama shimasu. Irashai yoko so shitsure shimashita. And dou itashimashite oitoma shimasu. You have done shitsure shimashita meaning I will excuse myself. Now and again you have the chorus over here. You can go over the uta again and again and memorize this one. It is interesting and cute. So, with this I will end our lectures today. It has been a wonderful experience being with you, telling you about Japan, about Japanese people, about how they live, how they how they interact. I had promised a lot of things. We have done a number of them. We were unable to cover a few as it is not possible to do all in this short span of 40 minutes and 40 lectures. There is lots lots more to learn. We did how to tell name how to tell time, date, day. If you go to a post office, how do you ask for stamps? If you go to a bank, what would you say? If you want to know what day it is or date it is, what would you do then? If you want to inquire about someone's date of birth, someone's birthday, how to give presents. Also, we have done a lot of verb forms we have covered a number of verb forms and what to say in a in a situation we have done all of that for example we have done the past form the present form the negative form the past negative forms we have done how to say collectively let's do a certain thing then we have learned how to how to say, how to request, how to, how to tell about present continuous, how to tell that I am not sure about a certain thing, how to tell about I think about a certain thing in this manner, how to tell about your doubts. We have how to tell that I have the ability, I can perform a certain activity. So, all those things we have done. I have also told you about proverbs, how to use these proverbs and these kotowaza in the language, what is the meaning of these kotowaza. Then we have also done expressions, we did a lot of expressions just now in this class as well. Then we have also done culture where you have learnt about different festivals, about different things the Japanese do, interesting things the Japanese do. I hope that you will benefit from this class and you have enjoyed this journey and you will feel more comfortable in talking with the Japanese people. One thing before I part I would like to tell you do not hesitate to talk in Japanese even if you make a mistake it does not matter 
as you are learning a language, as you are doing something new, you are trying to speak a language which you are not comfortable in. So please do not hesitate, even when you are talking to native speakers, just go ahead and speak. And once you do that, that confidence is immense and it helps you speak better. So all the best to all of you. I hope you enjoyed and hope that sometime in the future we might meet once again. Well, goodbye and thank you very much.